Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Tonight we're going to learn how to fight like a Christian. <laughs> you see, we are in a war and we do fight, but we have to learn how to fight a totally different way than the world fights. And being angry <clears throat> is not the answer. We're going to talk about anger. You'd be amazed at how many people, even in here tonight, people who love Jesus, have anger issues. They have anger and bitterness and resentment in them for many, many, many different reasons. And some people have had it so long that they don't even really know that's what it is anymore. And it's time for us to deal with anger, to look at it for what it is and learn how to handle it. Anger is an emotion that people in the world don't, they don't think there's a problem with it. But Christians very early on learn that anger can be a real problem and so we fall into a trap of feeling guilty every time we get angry about anything and thinking well as a Christian I shouldn't feel that way and I went through the same thing one morning I was going to go preach this has been many 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 years ago when I was still doing a, a ladies meeting at my church in St. Louis it's been probably 25 years ago And um, I'm so grateful for the lessons that God has taught me, the things that he's shown me along the way on my journey, and grateful that I have an opportunity to share them with you and maybe save you some trips around the mountain. And so Dave and I had had an argument, and I was really mad. And, you know, anger and preaching doesn't go together very well. <laughs> and... I mean, I didn't have long. I had maybe an hour, and I had to get to the church and lead this meeting, several hundred people there, and I was mad. And I felt guilty because I was mad. And God showed me something that morning that was really very life-changing to me. Somehow or another, I ended up in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. I don't remember if... I just went there out of desperation knowing it was a scripture about anger or if the Holy Spirit led me there, but I saw it in a different way than what I had ever seen it before, and I want us to take a look at it tonight maybe in a way that will be life-changing for you. When you're angry, do not sin. Now, that was really the message right there. We'll get on to the rest of it in a minute, but that was where I got my revelation. It, it doesn't say don't get angry. It doesn't say if you ever get angry. It says when you're angry. <laughs> We're all going to have times when we feel angry. And it's not necessarily all wrong. I mean, sometimes it can be wrong. You're angry about something that's not even somebody else's fault. But, I mean, when people hurt us, when they're selfish and self-centered, when they do things to us, when they don't treat us right, when they talk about us, when they tell lies about us, We feel angry. So it's not feeling angry that's a problem. It's what you do with it <laughs> after you feel it. You see, if there's one life message, well, one of a few that I would like to leave with people, one of, I feel like, my life messages that I can hopefully impact the body of Christ with is that you can't help how you feel, but you can help how you behave. And just because I feel something, that doesn't mean I have to act on what I feel if it's going to cause me to behave ungodly. And if I don't feel something, that doesn't mean that I still can't behave the way that I'm supposed to. We have feelings, but we don't have to let them have us. We have feelings. They're rather fickle. They come when you don't want them, leave when you do want them. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Boy, man, on Sunday night after dinner, you can feel like going on a diet and losing 50 pounds. 
You know what I'm talking about. Monday morning comes and you don't feel so much like you did the night before. We can feel like getting out of debt and yet at the same time feel like spending too much money. We can feel like cleaning our house and yet feel like laying down on the couch. So, feelings for all intent and purposes are just very unreliable and very unpredictable and uh, sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not. So, you really just can't pay too much attention to them or you get yourself in a whole lot of trouble. And I sometimes think maybe the less attention we paid to all the feelings we have in the flesh, maybe the more we would feel what we should feel in the spirit. We can't let our emotions, our fleshly emotions dictate to us our behavior. See, when I was not nearly as strong in God, even though I was a Christian, I still did a lot of what I felt like doing. And if somebody made me mad, then I was mad. And if I felt like telling them off, I told them off. And if I felt like talking about them, I talked about them. And if I felt like putting a wall up and shutting them out of my life for three weeks, I did that too. But the more I've grown in Christ and the more I've come to understand his word, the more I've learned that I don't have the luxury of acting on all of my feelings, and I really wish the feelings would go away, but they don't always. So it's not necessarily my feelings that God's going to change, it's me he's going to change, so I can be stronger than they are. <clears throat> if there's anything that we need as children of God, we need to stop praying for all of our opposition to go away. Paul never prayed for people's problems to go away. You cannot find a place in the Bible where Paul prayed for their problems to go away. He prayed for them to endure whatever came with good temper. He prayed for them to have self-control and discipline and no matter what was going on in their life to behave the same as if it wasn't going on. And so this is a big challenge for us because we just so love to tell people how we feel. I feel, I don't feel, I feel, I feel, I don't feel, I don't feel, I feel, I feel. Can I tell you how I feel? Well, yes, I mean, I think we need to be in touch with our feelings and I think we need to own our feelings, but we also need to deny them the right to control us. Now, you might need to think this over a little bit because this is a huge problem in people's lives. And, um, you know, if, if you get pretty proficient at not letting your feelings control you, then they will get weaker and weaker because anything only lives if you feed it. And so the way to, to kill things is to just stop feeding them, stop giving in to them. And then they start losing their power over you. And what once was extremely hard is no longer as hard as it once was. So we all have feelings, can't always do anything about that, but we have to choose not to act on the feelings if we know it's against the Word of God. And believe me, you do have a free will and you can make a choice. I said you do have a free will and you can make a choice. You do have a free will and you can make a choice. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit given to us so we can control, guess who? See how smart you are? <laughs> At least this section over here is. <laughs> Shall we do it again? Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit that's given to us to help us control who? <laughs> all right, you all passed the test. So we have to get rid of the, I can't help it. It's just too hard. Now, 
I admit that if you let your feelings, especially anger, if you let it get into a rage, then you may be at the point of not being able to control yourself. That's why we need to learn how to recognize things when they're first beginning to happen, how to take every thought captive before they become a stronghold in our mind, how to resist the devil at his onset, at the very beginning when the enemy first begins to tempt you, that's when you get away from sin. Come on, you don't flirt with it for three weeks, hoping that you're not going to be the one that's going to get caught. Don't be like the little girl that was walking down the mountain path and she saw this serpent laying in the road and he, it was very cold and he begged her to pick, will you pick me up and put me inside your coat? I'm very cold. And she said, well, no, I, I, I'm not going to do that. And he said, oh, please pick me up. I'm very cold. Will you just put me inside your coat? So she picked him up, put him inside of her coat. And a little bit later, he bit her and she said, why did you bite me? He said, you knew what I was when you picked me up. We can go slow, that's okay. <laughs> you know, you don't all of a sudden get into an adulterous affair. <laughs> it starts with flirting. It starts with thinking the person that you're married to isn't, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not. It goes from one thing to the next, from a coffee to a donut to a lunch to a to telling this person now all your problems about your pitiful, pathetic, bad marriage. <laughs> well, anyway, that's not on the program either, but. <laughs> See, if we would just, I mean, you know, you've heard the saying around, you know, you need to nip it in the bud early. Well, that's really, I mean, we need the sooner the better. The sooner we take action, the better it is. And when you feel yourself getting angry, the sooner you say no. Not going to live like this. You see, anger, if it's not controlled, is poison to your soul. And this phrase came to me today, so I hope it's not too far out there, but I think when we allow ourselves to get bitter and resentful and we have deep-seated, rooted anger in us, I think it's like committing spiritual suicide. That doesn't mean you lose your salvation, but it just kills everything that God wants to do in your life. What does anger solve? Well, I learned a great lesson that morning as God took me to Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, be angry and sin not. So I realized that God must be saying that there was a way to be angry and not to sin. And that is, is to make a decision about what you're going to do with the anger before it's managing you. Then he goes on to say, how many of you ever get angry? Just wanted to see if I had the right group. I <laughs> didn't know if maybe I need to change my message or not. When you're angry, do not sin. Verse 26, do not ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury, or your indignation last until the sun goes down. You know, if you happen to get mad in the morning, you got all day, but. <laughs> if it happens on the way to bed, you're in trouble. All joking aside, it's obvious that he's saying here that when you get angry, you will get angry when there's injustice. That's not a sin, but God's saying, I've got a better way for you to fight your battles. I'm going to teach you how to fight like a Christian. <laughs> Instead of doing what you would have done before you were saved and just let that anger control you and start spitting all kinds of poisonous things out of your mouth, You can say, God, help me. Help me. I know that this is not going to get me anywhere. I know this is wrong. But I'm not going to act on this. I'm going to control myself. And I'm going to trust you to take care of this situation. We have an option. 
Thank God we don't have to take care of ourselves. Come on, some of you need to retire from self-care and just throw a big retirement party. Is there anybody in this place that's tired of trying to protect yourself all the time and trying to make everybody pay you back for what they did to you or what they didn't give you? Surely there's got to be somebody in this building night or somebody watching by television that you have been angry long enough and you're, you're ready to say, I'm not willing to live angry anymore. But I had a lot of anger for a lot of valid reasons. Anger can be very valid. You can have a real reason to be angry, <clears throat> but still Jesus is saying, you don't really have any right to because that's not the way I want you to live. I've got a better plan. I'm going to teach you how to fight like a Christian. Amen. When you're angry, don't sin. Don't ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury, or indignation last until the sun goes down. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give him no such opportunity. When we stay angry, it's an open invitation for the devil to come in and wreak havoc in our lives. God's got a better plan. Anger is only one letter away from danger. You stick a D on the front of it, and you got danger. And let me tell you that we are living in an angry world today. I am astonished, really, at the violence and how the violence in the world is escalating. I mean, even just the things that we've heard on the news in just in this one week, stabbings and shootings and young people going wild on the beaches and having to be arrested and young people after ball games that they won going out and doing all kinds of violent acts. And we just, we just go, what is going on? And I believe that one of the things that God has showed me is, of course, we know that, you know, there's a great decline of morality in our society. And anywhere that, well, let's just put it like this. The less morality we have, the, the more anarchy we're going to have. The more violence, the more crime the more people that are just going wild. And so this whole nonsense that's going on in the world today about trying to get God out of everything is absolutely, I mean, it's not even just ungodly. It is just very dangerous, extremely dangerous. People have to have something good to hope for. They have to have hope of change. And, and if, you, if you believe there's no God, then there's no hope. There's none. You know what I think? This just came to me this week, but I really believe that a lot of these people that are perpetrating all these horrible acts of violence, I think they're angry people that are without hope. They, they have no, they don't know how to win their battles. They don't, they don't have anybody to help them. They don't know anybody to talk to. And they just know that things are wrong and they're mad about it. And many of them have probably had things happen to them, but because they don't know God and they don't know how to let God fight their battles, then they get angrier and angrier and angrier, and that anger turns into resentment and bitterness and unforgiveness, and then it turns into rage, and then we have it. The enemies of Israel, several times it says in the Bible that their enemies were afraid of them <laughs> because they saw the hand of God on them. And so we need to make sure that we just don't have a little dab of religion every now and then. We need to have a full-on, on fire, stirred up relationship with God. And that means, now I want you to listen to me, that means we have to stop playing games and kind of dabbling around as a Christian. And we need to get serious about doing things God's way. And I just want to share with you tonight that it is not acceptable. Being an angry Christian is an oxymoron. 
It just does not go together at all. You say, well, I'm not mad about anything. Well, if you're not, you're one of the blessed few, let me tell you. You say, well, how do you know that? You don't know if I'm angry. Listen, I've been doing this a long time. I mean, this is not my first go around here. And I have never, never, not one time ever preached on anger, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, strife. Not one time ever, and at the end of the session, ask, how many people were having problems with that right now and they needed prayer and they were ready to turn away from it? I've never had less than 70 to 80% of everybody, everybody in the entire building stand up. So we have got a lot of angry Christians. <laughs> and you have to understand where there's no peace, there's no power. Where there's no peace, there's no power. Jesus had power over the storm because he didn't let the storm get in him. So we got a lot of things to talk about tonight and tomorrow morning about dealing with anger instead of letting it deal with us. Anger is one letter away from danger. James 1, 19 and 20. Understand this, my beloved brethren, let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense, and slow to get angry. <laughs> the Bible says that God is slow to anger. For man's anger, now I want you to get this, man's anger does not promote the righteousness that God desires. In other words, Anger is not the right way to behave, and listen to what I'm going to say, anger is not the right way to solve your problems. There's nobody in here that has ever solved your problems through being angry. It never makes anything better. You get two angry people yelling at each other, and now you've got a real problem. Be slow to speak quick to hear, slow to anger, slow to take offense. Let's be the kind of people that it's almost impossible to make us mad. Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> and I know it's possible because I mean, I had a quick temper. I was angry more than I wasn't. Sometimes I was verbal about it, and sometimes it was just something seething on the inside of me. When we get angry, if we have unresolved anger, we either explode or we implode. We either fall apart inside or we're blowing up at somebody. And a lot of times, you're taking it out on people that had nothing to do with what you're angry about. You know, if we don't understand this kind of stuff and we don't resolve these issues, a man can get mad at work because he didn't get the raise he thought he deserved and go home and take it out on his kids and his wife. And that goes on all the time. And a lot of it is because we don't own our anger. We don't admit, I'm angry about this, and I'm angry because it wasn't right, it wasn't just, I did deserve that raise, but God, right now, I'm going to release this to you. I mean, do you really think that you can get yourself a raise any quicker than God can? Oh, listen, we have no idea what God would do for us if we just let him. I said we have no idea what God would do for us if we would just let him. But we're so afraid that we're not going to get what we want. Listen, if God can't give me what I want, then I have no business wanting it. I said if God can't give you what you want, you have no business wanting it. Just because I want it doesn't mean it's right for me to have it. So the deeper you get into a relationship with God, the more you can trust him to do what's right for you. And you learn that nobody on this planet, not the devil and no person, can take anything away from you that God wants you to have. Now that's the way to fight like a Christian. Well, anger is an emotion that we all deal with. But it's what we do with that anger that determines whether it becomes a real problem or not. So let's pray and ask God to really help us exercise the fruit of self-control that he's given us and to always be quick to turn away from anger. 
then we can experience God's peace that is so amazingly enjoyable. When I first came to this place, this was a deserted uh, place with huge trees, rocks. It was like a den for most of the people. India is een heel arm land. In veel gebieden is er geen toegang tot drinkwater. Veel van deze plaatsen zijn onbewoond. When we dug the borewell, uh, then people got the news. They knew that. Uh, there is now water available in the area. That's how people started coming and started living in this area. Al meer dan 30 jaar zijn wij van Hemd of Hope, het christelijk zendingwerk van Joyce Meyer Ministries, actief in India. Tot op heden hebben we honderden waterbronnen en kerken mogen bouwen. There are many wells in this village, about three or four, but each well is dedicated to one community or one caste or one religion. One other religion is not allowed to go there to fetch the water. But we drilled a well outside the compound of the church. So it is open for 24 hours. People can get water anytime they want. There were about 30 to 40 people attending the Sunday worship service prior to having digging the bore well. We have now around uh, over 500 people attending the Sunday worship service. Yeah, so we plant a seed, we get an opportunity to come align ourselves with the pastor. He gets to build a community of faith, find new leaders and go plant other churches, which is really the great story. And as our partners uh, and their faithful giving, uh, we can see that which is really the great story, isn't it? It is such a privilege to be with you on this day. And on behalf of Joyce Meyer Ministry and Hand of Hope, we are pleased to present this water well. And we pray that this well will be a benefit to everybody around. And let this be a testament to God's love. Zelfbewust te zijn heeft alles te maken met vertrouwen op God. Dit is precies waar het over gaat in het dagboek van Joyce. Je bent wonderlijk gemaakt. Vertrouw op God en weet dat je waardevol bent voor Hem. Hij geeft je de kracht om nieuwe dingen te doen en hiervoor je gaven in te zetten. God heeft je wonderlijk gemaakt om moedig en vrij jezelf te zijn. Met dit dagboek voor vrouwen ontdek je elke dag iets meer hoe kostbaar je bent voor God. Bestel je bent wonderlijk gemaakt door te bellen met 026 2022 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash wonderlijk. Heb je een vraag over de uitzending? Schrijf ons. Onze medewerkers beantwoorden graag jouw vragen. Contact at joyce-meyer.nl